to lie. So what is wrong with lying, you see? Well, lying just is wrong. We, uh, as Christians, Why we know wrong? Jesus teaches us that we should let our yes be yes and our no be no. Because Jesus was absolutely perfect himself. He had no deceit in his mouth himself. And as Christians, we're meant to be followers of Jesus. And we even know this, don't we? At a deep level, we know in our consciences that lying is wrong. It's also, I think, either the ninth command, the commandment that we're meant to not bear false witness against our neighbor. I think this is something at a really deep level we all know is wrong. So lying is wrong because it falls short of God's own standard. Yeah. Especially it is get worse, like very bad wrong when we know. <laughs> I don't know the term for that. When we know lying the way what we say affects eternity of individuals. Yeah. So we see from Islamic Dawati at speakers corner, they do practice lying, they do practice takia. Mm -hmm. But as we look into their scripture, we are not surprised to see actually it can be supported something from their scripture. Yeah. We look at the Islamic scripture and then we see God of Islam lied. Yes. God of Islam lied to billions of Christians from the first century to 2018. Yep, we even have it in the Quran. We see in Surah uh, 354 that Allah is called the best of deceivers. Uh, and the uh, root of the Arabic word here is makr. That's, uh, sorry, that's Surah 354 and Surah 830. And it says this, it says, 
um, Allah was deceptive, for Allah is the best of deceivers. And though some of the English translations doesn't always have deceivers, it has something like schemers or plotters, the Arabic is very clear. Makr, the Arabic word, means actually to lie, to deceive, all of these things. So actually Muslims can't really get out of it that way. So when we look at the context of Surah 3, we see Allah is deceiving billions of Christians by pretending he killed Jesus, yet he did not kill Jesus. That's really bad lie. And that affects billions of people's eternity, mm. and Allah thinks he can get away with that. Mm. That's just wrong and unacceptable. Yeah. Why would Allah do that? What does he, that tell us about Allah's character, that he would do that? We look at the Surah 8, and then we see Allah even deceived his beloved prophet, Muhammad. He pretend there were few people in the world, yet there were thousands of people in the world. So Allah is not only lying to the Christians, but he also lying to the, his beloved prophet. Hmm. Plus, when we look at the Islamic tradition, we see Muhammad himself encouraged lying and he practiced that. Yeah. Sahih Bukhari. Yeah, 559-639, that one. Would you like to read Yeah, that? sure. Um, so this is where Muhammad allows lying um, because one of uh, his um, yeah, acquaintances had hurt him. And he says this, who is willing to kill Ka'b bin al-Afshraf who has hurt Allah and his apostle? I think he means hurt his feelings. I'm not quite sure what happened there. There are maybe through some, some poetry because um, Muhammad has form for killing his critics and people who mocked him. Uh, thereupon, Muhammad bin Maslama got up saying, Oh, Allah's messenger, would you like that I kill him? The Prophet said, Yes. Muhammad bin Maslama said, Then allow me to say a false thing, i.e. deceive Kaab. The Prophet said, You may say it. So he allows this, this guy, Muhammad bin Maslama, to tell a lie in order to assassinate this other person. And what eventually happens is that Muhammad bin Maslama pretends to Kaab that he needs like a camel load of food to pay off a debt and then kills him while smelling his hair. Did you know that part? So, Muhammad... <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Muhammad was supposed to be the last prophet, was supposed to be the best example to mankind, gives permission for individual to, individual to lie so that someone else can get killed. No. And then it gets worse. We read it from the biography of Muhammad, page 368. Mm -hmm. Sorry, 367. It is a similar thing. Shall I read it? Yeah. Okay. Then he, Ibn al-Ashraf, composed amatory verses, so love poems, of an insulting nature about the Muslim women. The apostle said, according to what Abdullah bin Mughith bin Abu Murda told me, who will rid me of Abnu al-Ashraf? Muhammad bin Maslama, him again, brother of the B. Abdul Ashal, said, I will deal with him oh, for you, O oh, Apostle of God. I will kill him, he said. Do so if you can. He said, O oh, Apostle of God, we shall have to tell lies. He answered, say what you like, for you are free in the matter. What is the reference for that? Ibn Hisham, so that's the biography of Muhammad, you can buy it on Amazon, page 367, it's called The Life of Muhammad, translation by Guillaume. So we've got another story that Muhammad gives permission to lie to another individual so that they can kill someone else. Another story, it is not only Allah is lying, but it is also Muhammad, who's supposed to be the best example to mankind, is lying, encouraging lying, so that people can get be killed. But it gets actually worse, because as Allah lies, as the Prophet of Islam lies, also Muslims are encouraged to lie. We go to the Quran in their holy book, Surah 3, verse 28, encourages Muslims to lie. Can you read that? Yes, sir? it says this. Let not the believers take disbelievers for their friends in preference to believers. Let that just sink in for a minute. If you're a Muslim, you're not supposed to take disbelievers as friends, even if we're not talking about lying for a moment. What kind of God says you cannot be friends with those people? What kind of God is it that doesn't love people so that people can't all be friends with each other? But that's beside the point. Let's carry on. 
who does that has no connection with Allah unless it be unless that you but guard yourselves against them. But what's really interesting is the tafsir of this verse. This is from Ibn Kathir, a uh, very well, highly respected, probably most authoritative uh, commentator on... Ibn Kathir. Sorry? Ibn Kathir. Yes, I said Ibn Kathir. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is what he has to say, classical Muslim scholar, Muslim commentator. Uh, he says this, sorry. Believers are allowed, about this particular verse that I just read, he said, believers are allowed to show friendship to the disbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. For instance, Al-Bukhari recorded that Abu Adada said, we smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Al-Bukhari said that Al-Hassan said that taqiyya, lying, is allowed until the day of resurrection. Allah lies about the eternity of Christians. Muhammad encourages people to lie, to kill someone else. And Allah steps in and then says, as a Muslim, you can lie until the day of resurrection. That's not very good, does it? Not very it good. It doesn't look very good. But it gets worse. Even Muslims are told to lie. Still Islamic tradition, still Islamic tradition steps in and then let's read what the Jalalayan tells us. I don't know, you've got that one, I haven't got this one. Jalalayan, so again Surah 3 verse 28. Whoever makes them as patrons does not belong to religions of God in any way. Unless you protect yourself against them as a safeguard. Takulan as a safeguard is the verbal noun from Takiyatan. That is to say, unless you fear something, in which case you may show patronage to them through verbs, but not in your hearts. That's two sources that say you can be perfectly friendly. If you're a Muslim, you can be perfectly friendly to a disbeliever's face, but in your heart, you can be thinking totally something totally different. It's not only hypocrisy, but it is the religions of Islam, which is identified as the religion of peace, just telling us, just telling us people can lie. And you can lie until the day of resurrection. It is all unacceptable. Another, another hadith tells us, he who covers up the faults and sins of Muslims, Allah will cover them in the world and hereafter. So, we have Allah who tells lie to the billion of Christians regarding the death of Jesus. We have got Muhammad as the best is lying, Allah steps in and then encourages Muslims to lie and then he says do lie until the day of resurrection. Do lie until the day of resurrection and Allah will cover it up. And where's what I'm also asking myself is where is the punishment for lying? Where is the punishment for lying to people in a way that uh, takes them away from eternity. I mean, that Allah himself has done. Not only does he not punish lying, but he actually is complicit in it. So again, I'm asking, what kind of a God is this that would be willing to deceive people in this way and be able, willing through his creatures and through his most beloved prophet to deceive other people um, for generations? It just seems so wrong. There's no, uh, there's no confronting of falsehood. There's no punishment. Uh, and it all gets swept under the carpet, you know, if, if Muslims, uh, it, it all gets somehow swept under the carpet by Allah. This is not a God of justice, at least not in my eyes. The Islamic scripture teaches, Quran came to confirm the Bible. Yet Bible tells us, God cannot lie. Bible tells us, do not give false testimony against your neighbor. Yet Islam comes with introducing a new God who is all right with deceiving and lying to billions of Muslim, billions of Christians and to his beloved Prophet. Islam steps in and Prophet of Islam encourages false testimony to against their neighbor. And 
I think we should probably also just be clear what we're not saying. We're not saying that Muslims by default are liars. We're not saying that at all. Uh, and it's not like you're necessarily your Muslim neighbour that you have to somehow think that everything that they say is a lie. We're not saying that. But we're just saying that because this doctrine is here in Islam, sometimes the arguments that, the, for example, the Dawah team give us about this or that, their own sources effectively tell us that we shouldn't necessarily take it at face value. We shouldn't necessarily trust it. So uh, again, for that reason, we need to dig a little bit deeper about what's going on. Um, and in all of this, give a ca the best counter example there possibly can ever be, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. There was no deceit found in his mouth. He never lied. He told his followers not to lie. Uh, he told us to live lives of integrity, to mean what we say. Uh, and isn't that just so much a better way of living, frankly? One of the things is very helpful to remember. Christian scripture, Islamic scripture, makes claim about people's eternity. If Allah is lying, if Prophet is lying, if Muslims are encouraged to lie, how can you put your trust about your eternity when it comes to listen to them? How do you know they are not lying about your eternity? How can you trust them? Allah deceived billions of Christians, Muhammad deceived people, and Islam Muslims who are following the Quran have right to deceive people. Eternity is not something we can make joke of it. Those are serious claims about people's eternity. Needs to be taken to serious. Yeah. We look at the Bible. As Bible teaches, men and women made in God's image, it is the same Bible tells us. You cannot give false testimony against your neighbor. It is the same Bible teaches us. With the, with the Spirit of God, we are becoming like people, become, becoming more like God. We are encouraged to be holy or told to be holy because our God is holy. Islam goes against that. But what I love about the God of the Bible is that he really sees our hearts. He really sees what we've done. He knows that we have all got it wrong, that we are all in some ways moral failures, that we've all, if it's not lying, we've all failed morally in some way. And actually God sees that, sees exactly what we're like. And he doesn't say, right, you've got to work harder, you've got to pray more, you've got to fast more until you somehow attain my perfection. He doesn't say that. Instead, he says, you're coming under my judgment because of those things, but because I love you, if you just confess them and that you need a savior and that actually the only way that you can be saved from your own moral failure is if I send my son, who was perfectly moral, to take that, to take it from you and give you his righteousness. That way you can be cleansed. That way you can have a new life. In that way, everybody, no matter what they've done in their past, no matter how many lies they've told in the past, that they can have absolutely new life because of exactly what Jesus has done for them, what God himself has done for them. The God who never lies, the God who loves us enough to give us his righteousness. So stop worshipping a God who lies. Stop worshipping a God yeah. who encourages people to lie and come to the eternal word of God. Come to the truth. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only way. He is the only way. The way, the truth and the life. To Jesus be forever praised.